In this session, we're going to look at layer 3 switches. So what is a layer 3 switch? Well, it's an Ethernet switch, it can look at Ethernet headers, and it can build MAC address tables. But it's also a router, because it can look at IP headers, it has an IP forwarding table, and an ARP table. So which function it performs depends on how you configure it. Out of the box, layer 3 switches usually default to being simple layer 2 Ethernet switch. So the slide shows what the factory default might be. Uh, this example has the eight ports, and all ports exist in one VLAN. The default is usually VLAN 1, and we have everything set up as the configuration snippet shows. The interfaces gigabit 1 through to 8 are all set up as switch ports in access mode, in other words, where end user devices connect, and they're all members of VLAN 1. So this would be the default setting. We could introduce VLANs. The example on the slide now shows four of the ports have been assigned to one VLAN, and the other four ports assigned to another VLAN. So talking through the example, gigabits 1 to 4, again, access ports, but assigned to VLAN 10. And gigabit 5 through 8, also access ports, have been assigned to VLAN 20. So, question for you, how does the device behave differently after this configuration change? How would any device on VLAN 10 talk to any device on VLAN 20? Remember, a VLAN is a completely separate virtual LAN from any other virtual LAN on an Ethernet device. We could introduce VLAN trunking. This is a way of connecting two switches together so that, as the slide shows, VLAN 10 on one switch can connect to VLAN 10 on another switch. And VLAN 20 on one switch can connect to VLAN 20 on the other one. The configuration example shows you what the configuration of Gigabit 1 could look like. There we have changed the switch port from access mode, so for end user devices, to trunk mode. In other words, it's a trunk carrying different VLANs. And the final line in the configuration shows which VLANs are allowed to propagate across that trunk. So if you cast your mind back to some of the previous sessions, what is different about the frames on this wire? If we need management access to the switch, well, given that VLAN 1 is the default VLAN, we can define VLAN as having a physical interface and an IP address on it. The example shows IP address 192.168.1.1 as the IP address of VLAN 1. So we are now able to access this switch for management purposes on that IP address. We'll also need to assign the switch a default gateway so that it can see devices outside this LAN. So again, the syntax depends on which model, which device, which vendor. The example here is one taken from a Cisco Layer 2 Ethernet switch. The management interface has its own IP interface on VLAN 1 with its own IP address. So you could imagine it as the switch's CPU being plugged into VLAN 1, but without actually using up a physical port on the switch. And you can use this to manage the switch via Secure Shell or SNMP or both. And like any other IP device, as I mentioned, it needs a default gateway to be able to send packets to a destination address on a different subnet. Now, what about when we introduced IP routing? What we want to do is to extend this by giving the switch an IP address on multiple VLANs. Each address, of course, is within the IP subnet for that particular VLAN. And to do this, we need to enable the internal router within the switch. And when we do that, it can receive datagrams on one VLAN and resend them on another VLAN. Remember the question I asked earlier? How do the devices on VLAN 10 communicate with the devices on VLAN 20? Well, we've now done it. We now have a layer 3 switch, an Ethernet switch that's able to send packets between 
different VLANs. In other words, IP routing. And here we have it in the diagram. We have the routing process sending packets between the two different VLANs on the switch. If you look at the configuration example, you see the two VLANs defined. IP routing is the keyword that has been added to turn on routing capability on the switch. And we now have interface VLAN 10 with its address that we saw earlier. And we have VLAN 20 with its address in a different subnet that has been introduced into the switch configuration. And the default gateway has been added in as well, so that for management access to this switch, we can see the rest of the world. And indeed, the VLANs on the switch can see the rest of the world as well. And it's really that simple. We have an IP address on each VLAN. Other devices can point the default gateway at us, and we will forward datagrams on their behalf. This is based on the IP forwarding table, connected routes, static routes, and so forth. So as I just described, this slide shows how this layer 3 switch is now acting as a gateway. We plug two end user devices in, the two laptops shown on the slide. They will have IP address or whatever has been assigned, and the default gateway on VLAN 10 will be 192.168.1.1, which is the address we gave VLAN 10 on the switch. And for the device connected to VLAN 20, its default gateway will be 192.168.2.1. Again, the IP address of VLAN 20 on this layer 3 switch. IPv6 is the same. We assign a v6 address to VLAN 10 and to VLAN 20 on the layer 3 switch. And again, we have the v6 default gateway, as the example shows. And then any device that's connecting to this switch using a v6 address will be using the VLAN 10 or VLAN 20 default gateway addresses, depending on which VLAN they connect to.